All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeline or CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Josh Fonger, who is an island in Hawaii right now. How are you doing, Josh? Glad to be here. Very good. And Josh is a consultant, coach, and speaker, developing and implementing systematic solutions to complex business problems. And uh, you are also the uh, sole agent for Work the System Method, based on Sam Carpenter's book, Work the System, The Simple Mechanics of Making More and Working Less. Now in its fourth edition, wow. So obviously it has... Uh, it has uh, uh, been been widely received uh, since its uh, publication, and you uh, and just before we get into our topic today, so you you uh, you met the author of this, and you've worked with him for a, for a long time. Uh, just just explain the background for people. Sure. Yeah. So I met the author, and if those watching on video, it's this book right here, Sam Carpenter, uh, over ten years ago, and um, he wrote an amazing business book about how to how to fix your business if you're working too many hours in it, uh, basically how to, how to scale it where your business grows, but your time in the business goes down. And uh, he had a, a large following of people who wanted some help. And so I started a coaching and consulting business based on that. And now we uh, also certify consultants around the world to take the methodology and, and help those in their backyard as well. Fantastic, fantastic. And what we're gonna talk about today is, and this probably will sound very familiar, to a lot of people who have either you know started their own business or in their own business or running their own business and that is a yo-yo business like i mean yo-yos as a toy lots of fun obviously as a business not so much fun right josh uh, not so much fun but that that's the that's the common place for most small business owners and uh after doing this for a number of years i just realized they typically hit a plateau and they might go a little bit above it or a little bit below it but they just they kind of coast until a series of catastrophic events happen all at the same time. You know, they, they get sick, their sales manager leaves, they lose a big account, and then they go under. And as you know, most companies don't last. And it's because they, they, um, they never get beyond the yo-yo string, right? They're, they're kind of stuck there. Yeah. So what, are, so what are some of the typical things that contribute towards a yo-yo business? Yeah, I think uh, it, the... The owner starts with the um, idea of building themselves a, a job, right? Where they they are, they're basically the hardest working person in their business, and they don't really have a business. They have they're an employee in their own business, and so they once they hit a certain level where they're making the kind of income they want to make, and then they they kind of stay at that point, and then they work hard when they want to make more, and then they work a little bit less when they want to enjoy their life. A little bit more and their money goes down and it's basically just kind of at this teeter-totter level and they never really have a, a vision they never have the right mindset they never have the principles the procedures basically the, the infrastructure to take the business anywhere and instead it just stays level and it might seem okay for a while but there reaches a point where the owner just um they get burned out they get burned out having to be on call you know five six seven days a week having to put out the fires, having to be the only one in their business that knows how to solve problems. And they, they need to um, eventually mature to the point where they say, you know what, I'm going to treat my business like a business, not like a job. And that's when um, some exciting things start to happen. Yeah, so one interesting thing there that you just mentioned about, uh, I don't think always having a vision or knowing where you're going, because I, I think that it happens to a lot of people, solopreneurs or small when start businesses, kind of have a vague idea or an idea of what you want to do, but not as maybe what size of business you want. Do you want it to be a lifestyle business? Do you want it to be a much bigger business? I mean, what do you want? I think sometimes people just start off and say, well, I will, I've got this idea or this is what I want to do, and then we'll see where it goes. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, the ability to be nimble, to be on your toes, to shift directions, to solve problems in real time is what entrepreneurs and owners are, are good at doing. And as they're figuring out their business model and how to actually make money with it, um, those skill sets are, are, are really important because they help you survive during that first year or two. But once you get past that and you do figure out who your customers are and what they really want and how to deliver that, then you have to you know, shift your, your mindset and say, now I'm going to build this 
to scale. Now I'm going to build this for consistency. Now I'm going to actually build up a team and see how far and how wide and how big of an impact I can make with this particular um, value delivery proposition that you've, you've built. And that's where a lot of owners never really switch. And they stay in this, this never ending cycle of innovation of, you know, changing their idea, changing their offering, changing who their customer is, and, then, and they're always changing things, but they're never really going to a, a better place. And, um, so that, that's what happens a lot of times with, with small business owners and, and they keep innovating themselves away from efficiency. Yeah, that's funny, innovating away from efficiency. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess then one of the challenges is then when you have your business is, is knowing the right people to bring on board or where, where you should, you know, who your first hires or contractors or whatever you're going to do, where are they going to make the biggest impact? Yeah, well, and, and you know, our whole methodology of work system is to, in a very linear way, first figure out, you know, where you're going to go. We call it a strategic objective and how you're going to get there and develop principles for how your business is going to operate. But once you get that, those initial strategic documents put in place, you need to break up your business into all the different components and start to realize that it's way too much for one person and it's way too much for, you know, even just a couple people and you have to start to, you know, put people and align them with the processes that actually operate the business. And that's a big thing that we focus on is isolating with home systems, isolating those separate systems, document those separate systems, and then bringing people on to, to work those systems, to actually manage those systems. And that does not happen in a day, but it is the, the necessary steps you have to take if you want your business to go beyond just yourself and what you can physically do um, yourself as an as a individual. And so that's, that's, that's the big shift. And in terms of deciding who to bring on first, that's, that would be a long discussion. But um, it, it, the, the advice I give most people is that you want to be able to break up our, your business into discrete pieces so that when you do separate it and give it to somebody, it's not amorphous where you're just saying, hey, I need you to help with sales. Well, that, that's not going to work very well. If it's, I need you to make sales calls to people on this phone list. And here's what I want you to say. And here's what I want you to say. And you leave a voicemail. And here's where I want you to record it. Okay, that's very structured. I, it's simple. And I like to say that simple things scale, you know, and complex things fail. And that, that's, that's, that's what you have to actually get to that level of detail. And then it's very simple to bring someone on. And if they don't work out within six months or three months, they can bring someone else on. And, you know, again, systems stay. But people come and go and you want to, again, realize you're building a business and that needs a team as opposed to I'm building a team because the team may, again, fluctuate a lot. So first, first have the concept of building a business and the infrastructure for the business. And then the team was, is a second, second piece of that. Yeah, no, I can see where, where uh, the, the temptation obviously sometimes is to you know, maybe just bring on a generalist, you know, somebody you can help here, there and, and everywhere, you know, take some of the burden off as opposed to, as you have seen a system or as you've just outlined there, taking a systematic approach and actually putting in the work to define the different parts of the business before you ever start thinking about who should be coming in to do that. Uh, yeah, well, and, and I mean, the reality is reality. If you need some sales and you think you don't know anything about sales and your sales process is not very defined well then as you're bringing on someone who has sales experience let's just say that the first part of what they're going to be doing for you is is helping isolate those separate pieces and to help to figure out which of those pieces can scale and, and document those pieces and so if you're not going to do it all by yourself the people that you bring on the first people you want them to have we call it the systems mindset as well and not instead build themselves a job you want them to start to build the systems of the, the realm they're in so that they can elevate themselves and they can build a team under themselves as well in the future. And it, it really it always starts from the owner having a, a bigger vision for what their business is going to be and also realizing that they need to have a strategy uh, that's scalable, right? So their strategy may need to shift from what it currently is to something that is much broader and bigger um, because building uh, what we do, you know, building these documented systems uh, to scale is not a very good use of time 
if you want to keep it small and you want to do it yourself and you want it to be a, a, a lifestyle business where it's just, just you and a part-time assistant, well then you know, don't bother. Don't bother going through the exercise of doing this. But if you want to impact more people, then this is the natural, logical next step. Yeah, and it's interesting because people who can think, you know, systems thinking is doesn't come naturally to everybody, right? Not everybody is able to actually define it and not, not just define it. Um, it's even harder to define simple, um, straightforward because we're very good at com uh, complicating everything or we b or we build things to exceptions as opposed to building to the rule and then dealing with the exceptions later. But I do think that systems thinking, it's not it's not something that comes naturally to everybody. So I guess you got to factor that in, too. Yeah, we, we try to take people through an exercise where they they separate themselves from the company, you know, close their eyes and, and see themselves outside and slightly elevated over themselves, over the business, over the team, and then follow themselves around and their team throughout the day or follow the order around or follow the customer around and see what are these discrete separate activities that are happening and then realize that each of those separate activities is its own system, right? It's, its own thing. And how do we isolate those separate pieces so that we can then improve them? And most people, they, they don't take the time to, to see that. You know, one of the exercises we go through is we actually have people write down every single thing they do and, and track what time it started and when it ended and what they did. It's very tedious. But you'll see that your day is made up of little slivers, tiny little slices of, of time that you're doing activities. And you can actually start to analyze what you do with those slices of time and activities and figure out ways of being more efficient and more effective. And that's what we're doing with, with the business as well. Yeah, no, it reminds me, I mean, I did lean office training some years ago. And, um, you know, as, as part of that process, too, it's very interesting when you do, when you analyze workflows and you time everything, but you also factor in the amount of time, it may be five minutes to do that task, but it takes two days for somebody to get to it, right? So, so it's not five minutes, it's two days. <laughs> and when you start to understand stuff like that, it, it makes a big difference. Yeah, I mean, uh, the theory has to make sense in the real world. And that's why with our, you know, our work system method, we, we, we try to make it as simple as possible and as easy to understand as possible because we know that your personal life, your family life, your business, political culture life, your employee, like that's all complex. And that's gonna be, you know, people are complex and that's gonna be where the challenges are, but you shouldn't make you, your business and the processes complicated. Those you wanna keep as simple as possible. And then if they're simple, the people who are operating them, you know, can have the time and the energy and the bandwidth to innovate on the fly if they need to in those special circumstances because they know 95% of the time it just runs this, this way we've already documented. It's really fast. It's easy. And that gives us the extra capacity, whether that's time, energy, um, mind space, or profit to then put towards those innovations or those big problems. Um, most people never, they never define or document that 95% normal way of the way things operate. And so it's always new. It's always different. It's always a unique experience. It's always an original. And much of business doesn't need to be an original, right? The way you, you know, review your financials on a monthly basis doesn't need to be this complex, innovative, new thing each time. Mm -hmm. It can just be very <laughs> systematic. You know, the way, the way you pay your vendors doesn't need to be some Herculean, complex, ever-changing way of doing it. You could do it the same way. Um, that's you know, that's where you're going to free up that capacity to do uh, to new to do new things. Yeah, no, and we all love to think that our, our our business issues and things like that are very unique to us. But the reality is that there, you know, there's a huge amount of commonality between most of them with a little bit of nuances. So, I mean, if you deal with the commonalities and then just isolate the nuances, it's a much more straightforward approach. Yeah, and, and it's, again, it goes outside of the, the nature of what an owner, how they operate. Like an owner is able to make a complex sale and innovate and change the way that's productized and priced. And they're able to shift the sales letter and do, they're able to do, do all these complex things, which in the end might make for a slightly better experience for that one particular client, or they might make for a slightly higher margin on that one particular client. But that that is 
not scalable. And so it often helps when we're trying to systemize companies to get the owner away from as many tasks as possible because they have the knowledge to make that sale and make the innovation and make those ships um, to everything. And if we can just remove them from the day-to-day, -day, then the, the new people who come in, they actually do want things routine. They do want things efficient. They do want things orderly. And they're the ones who can then help take the best ideas from the owner and put it in a scalable way. And so that's really the, I guess, the, the, the transition we take a lot of companies through with our, our trainings is through that shift where the owner's the operator and in there to the owner being more the, the owner, the owner actually being the owner, being the CEO. And if we can walk them through that shift, you know, the sky's the limit as far as how far they want to take it. But they do have to make that uh, difficult shift of, of delegating and removing themselves from the day to day. Yeah, and that's obviously very, very hard at times for, for people, especially if it's an, an, an somebody who set up the business, an entrepreneur themselves, the innovator, all of that is it's it's hard to give up things. And, and it's also hard to let people do things maybe a little bit differently than you would. Yeah, and oftentimes they they screw up, <laughs> right? They're, I mean, yeah. this is that's always the reason why you don't delegate is they're going to make mistakes. They're going to miss things. They don't care as much as I do. But that, that's part of the, the growing pains that you have to get beyond. And so you can give them the best tools necessary, which is a documented process that tells them how to do it the right way. And you can give them that. But beyond that, they're, they're not going to do it the way you do it. You give them the strategy, you give them the principles, but they're going to get close, right? And the goal is to get them as close as possible to the way you do it and to simplify it as much as possible so that you don't need somebody with 140 IQ who likes to work 10 hours a day, who's you know read 100 business books and you know has his master's degree. You can just find someone who is a you know a decent person who wants to work hard, who's ethical, and and you can give them the tools and they can do a good job. And that that's all you could. I mean, that you should build your business based on good people doing a good job. If your business is built is based on you know rock stars, superstars who are willing to you know do whatever it takes, well, that's not a very good business model because as soon as that rock star, superstar leaves or is sick or decides they want to do something different, you don't have a business anymore. And I've, I've seen that happen so often uh, where owners think that they have a really great business and really they just have a few people who are very exceptional that an average person would never work like that. And as soon as that person's gone, they realize that, that they didn't really have a good business. They just had a few exceptional people that um, they can't replace because that's not normal. And so you don't want to base your business on abnormal, um, you know, abnormally amazing people. Now, you also want to find them though. It's, it's great to find them. Just don't base your business model on them. Yeah, yeah. So it's more like it's icing on the cake as opposed to uh, the cake itself. And, and I guess the other thing nowadays, though, is that it is, I mean, you have so many options nowadays, you know, you can hire, you know, contractors from around the world at different price points, you know, you get skill sets. I think the comp the hardest thing I think with, with business today is that there are often, because, because things are getting more complex and technology, you know, there are often skill sets that you need, but you only need them temporarily or you only need them for a short space of time or only for a certain amount of hours a week. And in the past, what that meant is you hire somebody for that job and then figure out the other stuff that they can do as well, right, to justify it. And of course, they never, you know, they're, they're never as good at the other, other, the other things. But now... With the way things are, with Upwork, with all of these different um, solutions out there, you can actually hire to a specific need and just have the people work for the amount of time that is needed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I think you you should, um, but you do need somebody to hold on the fort, right? It is it is good to have somebody who can know you, know the strategy, know the business, know the end goal, and they can hold down the fort to bring on and manage and delegate and project manage all that, all the help, right? So yeah, we have people on our team who do some video editing or do some transcribing or do some social media or do, do various things. And they're really good at that. And they get paid a lot per hour to, to do that. Uh, but they're not full-timers. We do have full-timers who then 
will manage the work, who will recruit the work, who will oversee the work, because they, they're the ones who actually are, are running the business um, with a few helpers on the side. So I think it's important to have, have both, right? You really want to have the best of both, because if it's you personally, hiring all these individual experts who are working two hours a week, um, it's your your life is kind of a, a nightmare. Again, you can't do the, the ownership level things, but um, it has really leveled the playing field um, worldwide to have experts and everything available anywhere and oftentimes internationally so that the, the, the rates are lower. And if you're not willing to do that, you're going to um, have a really hard time competing. You know, if you're really mm -hmm. stuck in the old models of, hey, they have to live in my town and my, my town is a population 50,000 and they have to be full time and they have to come to work and they have to drive here and they have to work a 40 hour a week shift. You're, extru you're, you're limiting yourself in, in a lot of dramatic ways that the competition is not doing. And so um, I, I would suggest not doing it that way. A lot of the traditional companies that I coach or do you know, in our consulting programs is they will, they'll have, because it's a, you know, it's a physical location, they yeah. will have the full-timers there, but the full-timers there, again, will, will outsource pieces of the labor um, internationally or to other experts um, for a couple hours a week because they, they just know, there's no way they're going to be able to get that good of skill sets all wrapped up into one person. And if you have 15 amazing skill sets wrapped up into one person, again, you you put yourself in a really bad position, <laughs> you know, because yeah, yeah, the, once yeah. that person leaves, you're, you're in trouble. And so it's almost better to find each person on your team with a couple of skill sets and then build out the team as opposed to one person who has 10 skill sets because um, mm -hmm. it, it's, again, it's not, it's complex, therefore it's not scalable, therefore you're putting yourself at a, at a, a major risk for the future. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Well, listen, Josh, this has been great. And all of Josh's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, um, please do tell people a little bit more about you and, and what your company does, um, especially because I do think, uh, as we know, there's a lot more people deciding to go out into business on their own. So it's very timely to to consult somebody like Josh and to read the read the book and to understand you know, how to do it properly from the get go. Yeah, well, definitely. So if they go to WTSEnterprises.com uh, right now, they can get the, the book for free as a, as a free download. Uh, or you can get it on Amazon. You know, it's been around for I think um, 15 years now. So it's an amazing book. I didn't write it myself, but it, uh, Sam Carpenter writes about his story from working 100-hour work weeks to two-hour work weeks and having his income go up 20 times. And it's all true. And it, it's uh, an amazing method that I've taken and applied to a lot of companies. And you can find out about how the application works at WTSEnterprises.com. And uh, you know, my, my big goal right now John, is to get people who, like me, are coaches and consultants, and ultimately, they want to help companies, and they want to learn a method that's going to help them help the most people. And so, if that's you, and you're listening to this, then check that out. I'd love to talk to you and see if you want to join our, our consulting team. Yeah, fantastic. Great. So I would encourage people to ch check it out. As I said, I mean, there's there's a lot of people going out on their own. There's a lot of new businesses starting, you know, this great resignation is going on right now i keep thinking it sounds like the great migration on the serengeti but that's uh, beside the point so i think this is a great time check out the book if you like it you know uh, contact josh and who knows maybe you could be a consultant too all right um listen thank you all for watching and listening and i'll see you all for another interview really soon thank you yeah.